retro what? Retro who? Retrospective? What is that? Talk about it when you come back. What is that? Retrospective is just reflection. That's really what it is. Um, and it happens at the end of a sprint. Normally before you start sprint planning, you spend like a half an hour doing a retrospective just to reflect on the sprint and to capture what you did wrong, what you did right, what you need to improve on, what are the action items so that you can improve as you go along. It's a great practice. I think we should do it for everything. So at the end of something, you look back at it and you say, what did I do good this time around? What did I do wrong? What can I improve? How can we as a team work to, together better? And that's really what the retrospective is. So normally you have like, start doing these kind of things, stop doing these things, continue doing these things. And you have action items that are assigned to different people in the team for what to do. So typically you're all sitting in the room and as you saw in my video on sprint planning right here, I talked about how a sprint planning um, normally happens and what, what in all are the activities in the sprint planning. So for the retrospective, um, typically you look back on the sprint and you say things like, you know, we, we, did, we missed some um, requirements in the last sprint. We didn't capture validation requirements in the last sprint. We did not. Um, we did not finish the sprint. That's a big one. <laughs> Typically, when you don't finish the requirements or the, the stories in the sprint, that's a stop doing. Right? And you have these columns that you put them. Normally, um, teams will use like Confluence, which is a Jira product, to create a Confluence page. But you could just have it in a Word document. It could be in Excel. Could be whatever tool that you use, just to capture it somewhere that you know you missed the estimation maybe you need to re-estimate some of the tickets because you thought you could get it done and then you didn't get it done it became more complex so you capture that you capture things that caused you to miss for example if you didn't have all of the information you needed to test properly so the testers might say hey we didn't have social security number to test with we didn't have this we didn't have that and that becomes information that you will use the next time you, you encounter a story or a, a user story like that you know you need to have these things right it's learning it's in project teams we call it lessons learned we call it retrospective on the sprint agile team because you know it's just a reflection in a over a short period of time so you have your start doing you have your stop doing you have your action items and it's not something that you should be ashamed to, to mention, some people are like, I don't want to point fingers, I don't want to say that it's all your fault or so on and so forth. But the thing is, you have to recognize what is working, what's not working, so you can improve. And if you have a good team, they should not be uh, so sensitive that they can't take any kind of criticism and they can't take any, um, you know, suggestions. And you yourself, as a business analyst on the team, maybe they said the acceptance criteria wasn't correct. That's not a stab at you, it's just that you have to be more diligent next time to make sure you improve on that point, right? So don't be too easily offended and stuff like that. We have no place for that in the retrospective. It has to be open and free because we have to grow as a team and we have to be able to call out things that are not working so we can make them work for the next sprint. So it's, it should be like that. It should be very open and very honest. Um, and you too, if you have a problem that you've encountered, you should make, make the note. For example, you could say, we did not get a demo at the end of the sprint. So I don't know if what I wrote in the acceptance criteria is actually being, being built. So we need to improve on that to make sure that we do get a demo before we get into the next sprint planning, things like that. You know, or you could say that um, the, 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 the deliverable did not match what you had in your acceptance criteria, but it was passed in the QA. 
So the QA people need to be more diligent to make sure that they check all of the acceptance criteria before they say that this, the, the ticket is done. So things like that. I mean, you're not pointing fingers, you're just calling things out. And then there could be things that you just say, okay, let's start doing, let's start, um, let's start informing the organization about what we've accomplished at the end of each sprint so that when we get to the release, we don't just spring all this new stuff on them, that they would have seen the progress as we have been building things. And if they saw something that was wrong and we need to change, they would have had an opportunity to do that. Or you could say, maybe let's start having a test environment so that we can um, put in all of the use cases in there so that other people in the organization maybe support, maybe your customer service people can go in and look and see how it would look if it was set up for a client or a customer, whatever the case may be. Those could be your start doing things that you haven't thought about before. Um, and then maybe you could just, you know, recognize things that have been done well. For example, you could say, we're very grateful that you were able to complete the stories and pick up other stories that were in the backlog so that we could be ahead for the next sprint. So it's just, it's just like that. It's a reflective kind of team building activity that we go through and we call it the retrospective so that we can help each other and be better every time we do a sprint. So hope this was useful for you. Again, if you haven't, please subscribe and check out my other videos in the series. This is a series about the agile business analyst and I'm talking about retrospective, I'm talking about sprint planning, I'm talking about stand-ups. You know, I already have a video on what is agile and what is how it is to write a good uh, user story. I'll be making another video on the acceptance criteria piece just to zone in a little bit more on that. So if you like this kind of content, check out my other videos and I will see you next time. Take care.